For Rethink Con 2024, we've had a number of guests across a broad range of industries, and our next guest is in the banking sector. So, hello, guest. What's your name? Who do you work for, and what do you do? Hello, I'm Franco Sabini. I'm the trading online back man- backend manager for Fineco Bank. Fineco-, Fineco Bank is an Italian bank, but also that specializes in online brokerage. We were formerly part of the Unicredit Group. Then in 2019, uh, we, we were sold by Unicredit and now we are a public company. How long have you worked at the bank for? Oh, that's some 20 years. Oh, not long. Okay, so you kind of knew it this then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <freshman>, yes. <laughs> awesome. Um, so... I appreciate there's going to be things you can tell us and there are going to be things that you just can't tell us. But um, the system that utilizes NATS, can you, you know, share some details with that? Yeah. Uh, what NATS is using, use it both in the back end and front end, actually. But uh, basically in the back end, we are connected to many European and US exchanges, I receive orders uh, to buy and sell stocks from our customers. Uh, we perform pre-trade checks. Uh, we basically decide if the customers have the money to buy certain stocks or have the stocks to sell on the market, and for example. And then we send the order to the relevant exchange. Uh, all these messages are now exchanged uh, with, the from, with the front end uh, via NATS. And also within the backend itself, there are several programs that talk each other, uh, exchanging uh, NATS messages. And wow. that's the, the basic usage. Uh, yep. We also use in other um, for other things like uh, for market data. We receive the prices from the market. We, we don't use NATS directly, but we are starting using NATS. The key the NATS. Uh, even in that scenario. Wow, so quite wide and pervasive use. Incredible. So next silly question then for you. Are you at liberty to say where and, and how NATS is deployed? So it is, do you have a centralized cluster? Is it is it kind of global? Does it cross multiple clouds? Uh, no, we have uh, two clusters on premises, one for the back end, one for the front end. And basically, that's it. We have our own installment in, here in, uh, in Milan on two def- different premises. We are planning uh, to have one in, uh, in cloud, but that's not for the near future. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. With a system, uh, I guess really a system in a, an organization like a bank, I imagine there is a lot of uh, historic systems around so can you describe where your journey with nats began please well, i'm really curious um, about that yeah we uh, had a, a very strong request from our system administrators uh, not to use uh, multicast uh, uh, protocols anywhere in our environment because they are driving crazy with multicast protocols and and also there is the this idea to have a premise on on cloud a data center on cloud and it doesn't work very well with multicast. I've been told by our system administrators, I tend to uh, <laughs> to believe them. So uh, we were using uh, Tibco Rendezvous uh, heavily. I mean, I mean Tibco Rendezvous is everywhere in, in, uh, in our organization, was everywhere. Now <laughs> it started being, uh, we are moving away from the Rendezvous for this reason. And we were looking for something similar and of course, when we took a look to, to NATS, uh, it immediately uh, was very clear that there were a lot of uh, similarity from between uh, Rendezvous and NATS. And then I later discovered that uh, the people involved in the, the folks involved in, in, the, in NATS, in developing NATS, were also working on Rendezvous in the past. So. <laughs> it, it was very clear just looking at the protocol, but there is a reason behind that. And that's why we stumbled upon NATS and we decided to adopt it, basically. Fantastic. That's that's really, really interesting. And, and again, with these 
with these styles of conversation, there's there are millions of questions that I that I love to ask, and, and probably mm-hmm. answers maybe uh, for only some of them. Um, was it fairly? And again, this is this is probably a loaded question. Was it fairly simple to go from then the the kind of previous technology stack that you had to go uh, to go to Nats? I mean, how was that journey for you? Yeah, uh, it's been easier than we thought. We we, we were hoping for because uh, really the the protocol is very similar. The concepts behind are very similar. We we needed fire and forget messages, and there are there are fire and forget messages based based on the idea, the concept of subject, which is the same in Rendezvous. Uh, we needed a request reply, and it's exactly the same. We needed persistence, and and the time when we started looking nuts, uh, uh, Jetstream was uh, in just. Uh, being developed in, the, in those days, the very first versions. So we was told that we could use Stan, that we, which is the previous version, the take. But if we were planning to adopt it in a few months, it was better to wait for Jetstream to be generally available. And that's what we did, actually. The transition has been uh, easy on the file and forget part. With Jetstream, we, uh, we had to work a bit more because it's a bit different from with Rendezvous, but um, nothing to to lose our sleep. I mean, uh, it's it, 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 it's been quite easy. There. That's awesome to hear. Um, with your development team as well. Mm. Do you find they would they work with multiple languages, or are they kind of focused on? Uh, I guess, can I be as brave to say this traditional languages that are used in banking? Yeah, no, I I, I don't know if C plus plus is a traditional language is for banking, mm. but we we use C plus plus a lot in the back end and Java for the front end. But then uh, that's funny because uh, with the Nets we started looking at GoLang, and we are now we now have. Mm, a few programs uh, written in Golang in production, and we are planning to have more in the future because we love the language and the and the way we, you can uh, you can develop with with it. We having error checking and unit test and so on, and it's been a fairly easy transition from C++ to Golang, my colleagues are telling me. So, uh, yeah, we started working with Golang a lot. That's interesting to hear. So a transition story within a transition story. I like that. Very inception-y. Mm-hmm. When you're thinking as well about projects that are going to unfold in 2024 or obviously in, into the future, um, do you begin to... And I've got to try and ask this without sounding like I'm setting you up to say yes or no, but... How do you use Nats as a set of tools? So if Nats is like, you know, the umbrella and yeah. in there we have core Nats and then we have the durability, you know, set of capabilities. Um, how do you view new problems? Has it affected the way that you think or because the way that you previously thought with your distributed systems experience, has it has it changed or hasn't it changed? I'm really curious as to, to how you view those kind of new upcoming challenges. Yeah, it doesn't change a lot. It hasn't changed a lot because with the rendezvous, it was already very similar. It has changed uh, a lot the key V, the key, the, the key values changed a lot because we were all, always looking for a way to have a, a cache, and we have different we had different uh, products to, to to have a caching mechanism, but uh, everyone had its own setback or peculiarity, so we tended not to use cache as much as we do now with nuts. Because now it's really every time we have a new pro- project or idea or something, we always think, oh yeah, that could be a key net key value, key key value. We it, it's really again has been a game changer for us. Wow, that's that's really interesting to hear, and that's led me nicely to a, a next curveball question regarding operations and division of responsibility for Nats. I mean, how does how does Finico cope with that? So is it do you have like an SRE team, a DevOps team? Is it on the shoulders of developers? Mm-hmm. Can you share any information around that? Yeah. We yeah, we basically have a DevOps team and uh, we I, I, for for example, I have a couple of colleagues that, that are uh, the main developers but also uh, works in operation. So they if there's a 
a problem or something to solve, they often have their hands on the problem directly. So they are um, they are also on call twenty four seven. So uh, yes, the, we we have a we are strongly using DevOps as a, as an idea as a concept. And well, it, it's fair to say that uh, till today there hasn't been any major issue with the nuts. So everything is went pretty straightforward. We are very happy for that. I mean, uh, our scare when when we were looking for a typical rendezvous alternative, we we came from a twenty years experience on on the product. So everything we could have chosen, it would have been something new for us. So our 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 uh, major concern was about uh, what what we, do we do if something happened in production. Mm. For that, we have, of course, a contract with Synadia, so we uh, we know the, that we, we, we would have an, uh, an help from them. But also, I have to say that everything is, has been pretty smooth till today. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, and just for the audience, uh, we didn't stage this, by the way. This is, this is straight, <laughs> straight from his own mouth, which is, which is even better. Don't worry, I'll send the check in the post. Um, I'm only joking. Um, regarding performance and scale mm-hmm. of numbers, can you share any just kind of average numbers, say messages per second, or kind of number mm-hmm. of uh, keys that you're, you're currently working with? Well, I think we don't have the, a, a, a great deal of messages being exchanged. Compared to other to other uh, situation I've I've been looking on the internet, we are we are around something ten thousand messages per second, something like that. It's our peak. We 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 mm, we are more more concerned by reliability than performance at the moment. Uh, so mm, honestly, we we don't we we just have these these numbers which are I think are not. Exactly, uh, high numbers for other for that for that for other scenarios. Yeah, no, I've got you, and that's um, yeah. I think it's it's a different dimension and different set of different set of challenges with it within a bank instead of you know something else like a, like an edge AI system. Yeah. Um, so does that then lead me to assume that then for things like key value that you're running R three or R fives across those? Uh, sorry, didn't get that. Also, the the replication uh, for the key value. Uh, that, that you're using um are you running kind of like our replica of three and five for those for those data stores we have everything replicated in three we are l3 on everything mm, just because we don't have any performance issue so we replicate tend to replicate everything <laughs> got you yeah that's that's lovely well we're running up on time for for this very very short but very informative chat so thank you first of all for agreeing to do this for Senadia. Awesome stuff. Is there anything that you'd like to leave with the audience be before we call it time? Well, yes. Uh, actually, there is one thing that I can mention. Uh, when we were looking for different products, such as Kafka, we looked for uh, uh, Solas. There were um, a number of alternatives. Uh, what, what I came to understand is that uh, with Nats, we have a really easy administration. Everything's worked out of the bo- out of the box, and you don't need to uh, pull level triggers, uh, change flags, uh, and whatever. When it works, it works. That's the, maybe this is the best feature of Nuts. I'll take that. Thank you very much, sir. Have a great rest of the day, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you very much.